Hello. Oh, you hear me. Um, great to be here for the second time. Um, so, um, I'm an artist, but my palette is code. I, um, I create art based on technology that I create. Um, because I have 10 minutes and a lot to show, I'll just drive forward. What I'm going to show you first is, um, is an installation that is running now in, in Germany in a projection biennale. This is a, a water dance pr um, work I've done. It's totally synchronized to the music. I'll let you see it, but I want you to understand that it's uh, the, the location they gave me in the, in the Bianala is a, is a fountain, it's a 10 meter fountain, and what you'll see is, is projected on the fountain. This is just a, a minute from um, the work. What it is, it's, um, it's basically a water simulation um, using a, a new technology that I'm able to capture human movement, but also their physiology in real time. And this is the simulation, uh, the water simulation itself. It's a, it's a four and a half terabyte uh, file, a lot of data. And as you can see, um, this is projected on the water. So the when you stand there, you, 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 it's sort of like a hologram uh, running in real time. So this is running live, but because everything I do is, um, is 3D, as you can see, this is the dimension. Um, it's very large. Everything that I do is three-dimensional. Therefore, I always choose moments within my simulations, and I print them as sculptures, very, very large sculptures. So here is um, examples of some moments from the simulation. Uh, for the last uh, two, three years, I've been working on visualizing music in real time. Um, I believe the future of music is visual. We will experience music visually and not just you know, by hearing it due to CPU, GPU, etc. So check it out. This is, we just released it with Apple Music when they came out. Everything you see here, is being driven by multi-channels of the audio. So for example, can you put the audio up? So the, the sphere is the bass, and the cluster of those particles, they follow, you hear it? It's like uh, they follow the up. And it's happening in real time. So if I change the music, everything will change. Running one more second. You got something to say, I know that you do. Whenever you try, I feel like I can do too. Soon to become three. So everything here is responding in real time, even the software will detect the lyrics in real time and we run it. Um, so this is uh, another example. But what I want to show you now is um, the engine that I've been developing with Autodesk. Um, I've been collaborating with Autodesk on multiple, um, multiple <coughs> projects. Um, you can see that I'm responding now in real time. When I talk, the engine responds in real time to what I'm saying. 
And basically, imagine you can enjoy the music in real time. So we'll show you in a minute a live experience here um, on stage. Next, I want to show you my um, current exhibition. I have four exhibitions. I was invited um, to present with uh, a retrospective of William Turner. Um, he's doing sub he painted sublime moments, storms, eruptions of uh, volcanoes. My art, the simulations I do are very extreme situations. And I had, I had the honor to, to exhibit um, with people like, you know, Corbet, Monet, it's, it's almost like a, you know, somebody who was dreaming to, to, to sing with Bowie, and I'm, I'm like the, the band before, right? So presenting with, with Turner is a big thing. So what you're watching now here is my interpretation of an ocean. How can you encapsulate the energy of a storm ocean? And as you can see, this is um, it's a simulation that I sort of capture, and then I freeze a moment, and I print it. And this stands in correlation next to the Turner paintings. So another example, it's this um, nuclear bomb, very iconic. This is not a video, it's millions and millions of particles that I created. And the, the work is, is two and a half meters, and it stands next to a very famous uh, painting uh, by Turner, the eruption of, um, this, this painting is, is unbelievably amazing, so you can see it just stands there next to those. There are multiple works there. Another one is a waterfall. So what I try to do, I create art that is, is sort of um, capturing moments that we're normally not used to see. Uh, this sculpture is over uh, th four meters, um, I'm collaborating with Stratasys, so we're pushing the envelope of what's possible with 3D printing. Um, I think it's probably the, larger, the largest 3D printing object. Um, this is a series of collisions, accidents, if you will. And here, um, I'm basically, I'm not showing you the, the tragedy of the accident, I'm basically showing you physics of collision. And um, this is the setup in the museum, and you can see the detail and the intricacy so I capture moments, and I invite the user to actually immerse within the moment. Um, the next thing I want to show you is a project that I was approached by NASA um, almost two years ago, and they told me that they are building a 3D printer in, in, in space, in zero gravity, and they invited me to do the first sculpture in space. So I will just basically run a, a quick clip from a documentary that Vice is doing on this project. They're following me and NASA for the last uh, year and a half. So this will introduce the project better, I think. <laughs> to look at countries or you know particular culture um, trying to take a really zoom out perspective the story of humanity is art that's it and NASA digs it they get it and that's why they want to do it in space hey, Al Gaber does this amazing art that is you know in some ways already inspired by the notion of zero gravity it's hard to believe that it can even exist the way you're looking at it. And we started asking him, what would you do if you could build art in zero gravity? I was approached by NASA and they invited me to do the first piece of art in space. The reason was they created a, a new kind of a printer, a 3D printer that can print in zero gravity. That was a big deal for me. I mean, just how do you create a, a, a first sculpture in space? Made in Space was founded back in 2010 with the idea that people should be living in space now. NASA released in, I think, in the 70s, a golden record where they, they burn into the record many, many uh, elements like music, um, language, all sorts of human cultural things. What they explain is that as a global entity, culture is important to them. Art is a big part of that. They have a responsibility for humanity. They are a major force of our progress as humans. You know, 
Uh, one of the areas that we are excited a lot about is the area of art and how we can design new types of art that maybe we can't even bring back to Earth because we're building a sculpture that wouldn't even survive in gravity. Something that I never predicted became a, of importance was what's the subject matter of the piece of art? Taking into consideration that I should be living as an artist as well as a worthy piece of art that can represent humanity. And I came up with the idea, how about making a shout out to space using sound sculpture. I kept on thinking about the sound sculpture for space and I realized, you know, maybe I shouldn't even think about using a person or a certain language that has political connotation or uh, culture or time or race. And then a friend of mine said, why won't you do a human laughter? And I said, wow, you're so right. We all laugh. <laughs> And space is so quiet and just, you know, creating a sculpture that encapsulates the human laughter and mathematically you can always go and decipher the spectrogram of the laughter. So it's almost like a frozen laughter in space. I came up with the idea that we invite people to go to a place online and they can record their laughter and then actually the wisdom of the crowd will actually choose which of the laughter they want to send to space to represent humanity. We can ask the world what laughter soundtrack should we use. So in a computer we can create the simulation of what that laughter sounds like and turning it into the three-dimensional object. That then we can 3D print in space and it will exist there. It will be the sound of humanity in a way. The sculpture itself encapsulates the laughter mathematically so when future humans will find it, they can decipher it. To me, it's iconic, like the first hand, you know, painting in the cave. Main challenges are A, you're doing something in space, number one. Number two, this is a very, very cutting edge, bleeding edge technology. For example, the project been delayed a few times because once the rocket that was supposed to get to the space shuttle with supply exploded on the way. There could be um, asteroid storms that um, can, can delay the project. Um, other than that, hey, it's just making a sculpture in space. It's not that hard. Good radar data. Is everything looking good? Altitude 4200. You're go for landing, over. It was very intellectually challenging and, and exciting to try to forget about fundamental issues we have as humans and how we fuck up the world and how we fight one another and the whole bad things that we as humanity do and elevate to, on the other hand, that we are amazing creatures and we're doing amazing things and look where we got. That's one small step for man, one giant leap. So, this is uh, the project that is coming out with NASA. Um, so if you are in Holland, go to, I invite you to go to the Reich Museum to see the Turner exhibition and stay tuned for the NASA project. Um, we're about to release it in the next uh, month or so. Thank you, I try to do it in 10 minutes. Thank you very much. <laughs>